Hey guys, Dave from Nerdarchy, four nerds by nerds, hang out with this nerd. Nerdarchy is Ted. And we delve back into our series, Why 5th Edition Dungeons & Dragons Needs Ebron. This time we're talking about elemental powered vehicles. Jump down to the description below where you can sign up for Nerdarchy the newsletter, get weekly gaming tips, as well as learn how to game with Nerdarchy. So one of the things that sets Ebron apart from other campaign settings is modes of transportation. In this case, elemental vehicles. This is literally a situation where a wizard, artificer, wizard? Mage right artificers. <laughs> uh, they, they essentially imprison an, an elemental and use that to power and move a vehicle of the appropriate type. Yeah, in Ebron, they, they'll either use an earth elemental, air elemental, water elemental. Do they ever or, use... They do use fire elementals as well. Um, your, earth, or your air and your earth elementals are actually used for creating airships. Um, all the airships are pretty much controlled by House Lorander, and that's your half-elves, and they have the mark of the storm. Now, surprisingly enough, the gnomes actually have a lot to do with elemental vessels in Ebron. They're actually the ones, I think, believe that, that learned how to imprison elementals and harness their power. Well, it, it is definitely a gnomish idea of, hey, I want to I wanna imprison uh, an elemental or use an elemental to, 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 to make this crazy idea work. Water elementals are actually used to power House Lorander's uh, galleons. So they're, they're ships like normal ships, but they move much faster because they're powered by an air elemental. Oh, you know, ima imagine if you could have an elemental at your service to just move the wind that much faster, stronger, directly in the direction that you want to go. It's going to fill your sails, and you're just going to cut through that water like a hot knife through butter. Although I think they actually use water elementals to, like, swim the ships through the water, basically, at the, you know, with the, basically, like, the elemental pushing them. Right. Or, or it also makes me think of, like, a like a, a steam-powered um, ferry, you know, like one, like one of the river boats, paddle boats right. that, that they used. But instead of the paddles, they have a, a, a uh, water, elemental. water elemental doing the work. There's also the lightning route, which again, that now that's House O'Brien. And they are basically, that is the um, mark of transportation. And they basically are like the mailman of Eberron. And they also do, they're the porters and overland transportation as well. Now, that all kind of sounds kind of blasé, but... You know, a, a train that's powered by lightning and can travel at immense speeds across the country has a number of incredibly useful opportunities. And also, one of the interesting things about the lightning rail in Eberron, that is actually pre-war Galifar that it was created. You know, the, the, the stones, um, the lightning stones were basically, you know, put into the earth, they... Uh, putting them to the ground, and the train kind of hovers above these. The train itself uh, is made to Zalargo Zilar specifications. And again, these, I believe, use air elementals to help push them along the lightning rail. Oh, and you don't have to worry about, you know, friction of wheels and all that kind of stuff. And powered by a little mental. I mean, come on. Yeah, it is actually very cool. And it also makes for adventures that you couldn't normally have in another campaign setting. Well, literally, you ran an adventure that was like trouble on the lightning rails. And there was a combat where we were on top of the train. And it's like, all right, somebody got pushed off. Well, that's usually death. <laughs> yeah, that could be a big problem. Yeah, it does create these scenarios where you can almost do like westerns, like for like, you know, train robberies or very Pulp Fiction-y type action sequences. It's really cool. And then that brings us to airships. We touched on them, but an airship is usually powered either by a fire elemental or air elemental. Again, they have the containment rings. And, you know, so you can have uh, you basically naval battles in the sky. You know, there's pirates and privateers. Uh, again, mostly Hasslerander controls all the traffic with these airships, but that doesn't mean other people can't get a hold of them and use the technologies. Now, they also use these in conjunction with um, Zalargo, the gnomes as well. So, uh, elemental transportation in um, Ebron is hugely dependent on uh, Zalargo and the gnomes. So, the, g getting back to, to the airships, I mean, typically in a naval battle, like you can look out in the distance and you can see the other ships. Well, 
that's only looking at an X, Y axis. Well, imagine, imagine when you're talking about adding submarines into the mix. Well, if you can't notice the ship via sonar or something else, they're going to be able to come up and attack you before you even know it. So if you're not looking through the bottom of your hull to see a ship that might be coming from underneath, you know, you, you could be in, a, in, a, in dire straits before you even have a chance to respond. Or if you don't look up above as well, you know, there is, or cloud cover. So there's all kinds of interesting things that, that can happen when you introduce, you know, airships into it. But um, And there's also a couple other things that are worth mentioning. They have um, tumblers and... Uh, Earth sleds. And earth sleds, right? Which these were kind of added later, and I haven't seen... I didn't see much of these in the novels themselves. Right. So the the earth sled is essentially a massive barge that travels across the earth and is powered, essentially, or moved by an earth elemental. It's like, all right, if, if a creature can literally move through the earth like an earth elemental, well, it's just moving across the earth. No big deal. It doesn't, doesn't even have to move things out of the way. It's just, we're just going to lift it up and push, lift it up and push, and it just this becomes this nice even glide across the entire earth, and you're moving huge amounts of cargo land, landbound. Now, that, that, that being said, you mentioning go, moving through the earth, well, the tumbler actually does just that. It literally basically tunnels or tum tumbles you know, underneath the surface of the earth and travels that way. Like I said, I don't know as much about those two modes of transportation because I didn't see see them used in, in the novels nearly as much. And we didn't use them in our games when we actually played Eberron. No. So. But the, the whole fact that you have these elemental vessels and you're moving much faster, you're move, you can move more people, more goods much faster, it totally changes the dynamic of the world you're playing in. Yeah, it, it, it increases how far something can get to in, in quick order so the farms can be further away and you can get crops moved to you know major metropolitan areas and be able to feed more people. You, you, if you deal in trade goods, well, it doesn't take as long to get to things, whether it's across the, the continent or across the ocean, it can still get here much faster because we have these powered vehicles that just do it. And if you're talking war, you're able to move troops and supplies so much so much further and faster as well. So it's it's a huge it makes a huge impact on the, the gaming world. Uh, and in addition to that, there's actually one other one that we haven't really talked about, but this one isn't really controlled by any of any of the house factions, uh, any of the dragon marked houses. The, and this one I have seen in several in at least one or two novels. And it is made mention in the main campaign setting, and it's kind of uh, one of the villains or one of your possible nemesis in the game that controls this. And that's the Lord of Blades. He has a mobile city in the Moorlands, which is like, that's like the nuclear waste fantasy version for Eberron where you just don't want to go. That, like if this was a, it's as if this was a post-apocalyptic world and it's all right in the Moorlands as the yeah. post-apocalyptic setting, right? Well, he's got... He's got a city that actually moves and walks around. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. So so that would be another one. So Ebron, you know, basically is taking the the idea of transportation and really incorporated incorporated into the campaign setting with elemental vessels. We got a walking city. And although this the, that isn't, you know, I don't believe that is elemental powered. Uh, and the other thing I'm going to mention too, but I think they're noteworthy for the setting. Uh, the mage bred animals, because mm. they also use them as well. So that means your ha your horses are faster, they're stronger. You know, you know, even you know your livestock animals are hardier. So so they they have the ability again to produce more goods, produce them faster, and get quicker, better results. It totally changes the world you're playing in. Absolutely, and when you've got access to essentially magical technology that allows you to do this. It, it changes the entire dynamic of the world. And that that's going to be seen in these things and, and the access of what your player characters have the ability to do. So let us know what you think of elemental vehicles and just transportation in general in Ebron in the comments below. While you're at it, like, share, and subscribe. You can check us out on nerdarchy.com. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.